Hello, welcome back. So, as part of uh, Databricks Certified Associate Developer uh, Certification for Spark, uh, so this is one of the another important topic uh, where uh, we discuss about uh, how do you define a custom schema for a data frame. Even though if you are not looking for a certification of uh, Spark Databricks, Databricks Spark certification, you, it is recommended to uh, kind of understand uh, this. This is as a developer, I say this because. This is most commonly used uh, in uh, in the real world projects because uh, we have to define the custom schema so for a purpose and it is important concept to understand as a data engineer or a data analyst uh, or if you're working with a uh, spark uh, concepts right so before proceeding if you are new to this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notifications so let's get started <laughs> So a important uh, check here before we get started and uh, so make sure uh, you use a headphone for the best experience and uh, adjust volume and the speed accordingly uh, and uh, pause uh, and take notes wherever it is needed. It is important to kind of acknowledge your knowledge what you are understanding and it is recommended to watch full video and uh, follow the course as per the sequence so because uh, each videos and each concepts are interrelated. Uh, so it's it's always be, uh, go in a better to go in a sequence as per the uh, playlist and uh, practice as you go through the course so which is important so that is why we are kind of uh, uh, bringing this course uh, as a combination of both practical and uh, theoretical uh, explanation and uh, using a database community edition you can also practice along with me along with the video so that uh, uh, as the course uh, go through and uh, you'll be able to get you will be able to gain more confidence with the hands-on experience uh, any questions suggestions uh, please feel free to comment in the comment section so i would be uh, happy to answer them and also if you uh, need any uh, practice notes so that we are uh, databricks uh, notebooks that we are using in the session uh, or in this videos uh, uh, please comment in the comment section or also send a request to the this email id which is mentioned here right previous video of this uh, same playlist uh, we were explaining uh, how to read a, a json file from a dvfs location so you can read from any other location as we have mentioned in the previous video like a blob storage azure blob data lake or s3 amazon s3 and uh, google cloud and you can read the data from a streaming sources as well or any database sources but here uh, just for the explanation of the data frame we are taking a simple uh, file we are reading a simple json file from a dbfs uh, databricks file system and uh, so all these uh, so are uh, basically if you are not loaded this uh, sample data into the workspace so we would recommend you to please watch the uh, previous videos uh, to understand how exactly uh, to upload these uh, sample files and uh, if you need the sample files, uh, we would recommend you to please uh, comment in the comment section so we'll be able to send uh, to you. Uh, and uh, coming back, uh, so so once you read this JSON file, uh, so you have spark.read.format uh, and you read this uh, JSON format and you are able to attach to a data frame, read into a data frame and uh, it actually displays like this and it actually shows the each attributes and its associated uh, data types here. However, as you can see, address ID is uh, been inter uh, is is been uh, uh, like uh, calculated or is been uh, inferred as uh, long. So this inf infer how the Spark is uh, inferring this is uh, based on the data. It is just inferring it. But uh, so as a developer, it is always recommended to kind of uh, keep this in a control uh, along. Uh, by defining the data types here if you're not defining the data type uh, so the spark uh, by reading the data or by understanding the data by itself uh, it defines its own data types so as you can see the birth date is string and address id is long so birth date uh, should be a date date or timestamp but here it is defining as a string so that's where it is important for a developer or a data engineer to kind of uh, keep this in control by defining the custom schema right so as you can see when you execute this also it is showing the address as long and uh, birth data string 
So now, how do you define a custom schema? So you can define a custom schema using, uh, like suppose, uh, uh, you can uh, define a variable here. So in that variable, uh, you can, uh, in the double quotes, you can uh, define the uh, each attribute and its data types, as you can see, right? And uh, here we are giving education status and then income is array of integers, right? So as you can see, this start from here the struct data type start from here demographic and it ends here right so as you can see so we are defining the custom data type and the important here thing here to notice notice the birth date i'm giving as data address as i'm, I'm giving as int and a few data types have changed according to my necessary necessity right so now if i kind of uh, execute this variable and i so when I'm reading the file, I have to uh, assign this variable inside a dot schema. So there is a property called dot schema, and in the, for this property, it take you can give, you can pass this variable. So that what exactly you're telling is when you're reading a file, uh, you just don't read it, but read it along by by uh, taking this schema, custom schema so that uh, you spark you are not allowing spark to uh, define its own uh, schema so you are actually doing a uh, custom schema allocation here so now as you can see address is integer and birth date is date so whatever i have defined uh, in this very as part of this uh, uh, variable uh, which is a custom data frame schema so which i am passing here so according to that all the data types are defined and also if you kind of query this even this will be the other way of uh, providing a custom schema is uh, so there is a so once you read the spark uh, data frame right so there is an option to kind of a uh, spark data uh, spark data frame dot schema if you do right so you will get this uh, struct type so these are the struct type uh, so you can define using this struct type you can uh, uh, basically uh, define a spark uh, uh, custom uh, custom data type for a spark data frame so this is another way of doing it so as you can see so this is a struct type and uh, so we need to kind of uh, import uh, certain packages so the struct type is uh, not available by default so you need to import this uh, uh, package to use a struct type and once you do that uh, so uh, please make sure that you use struct type whatever uh, so i have taken the output of this but uh, i have formatted it uh, uh, giving some array right and uh, also i have uh, so it is like in the here it is it shows like uh, integer close bracket open bracket close bracket so i have removed that i have just kept it uh, like uh, uh, without anything and uh, so you have just formatted like this so please observe so take this content and uh, compare this with this content so i have added as an array here here if you see there is no array so just uh, apart from that uh, it, it exactly the same and once i execute this uh, i'll get the result from here right and then so as you can see in the previous uh, command right so i'll just make it scala because we are using scala in this uh, for this actually and uh, so here uh, instead of the previously what we have used is this right as cust a data frame schema now we are using cust data frame struct type which is this right where i have defined the struct type as a, uh, a struct type value and this struct type uh, i'll uh, try to load using this struct type here uh, i'm giving struct type as a schema so instead of so giving this way is one way right and giving the struct type way is another way of uh, giving it and uh, both the way it works actually and as you can see uh, like integer is address is integer and birth date is date and so on right so here also you are able to read uh, and uh, print uh, print uh, schema also you works and uh, as you can see but but date is uh, date and address is integer so you can now you have seen uh, both way of uh, defining the uh, custom schema 
or custom data type uh, so there is one more option uh, which is uh, generally not recommended uh, so you can also use a infer schema so this option as you can see uh, you to use this option uh, you use dot option infer schema and you uh, specify as true and then uh, continue to by load right so whenever you use this option uh, what happens is uh, uh, you, you allow spark to decide uh, uh, to read all the entire data and uh, spark to define its own uh, data type right so even in this case as you can see uh, even you are if you are doing infer schema you are telling explicitly uh, to spark to uh, kind of a decide this uh, the data types and it is deciding as a address as a long and but it as a string still and one more thing is whenever you execute as an infer schema so you see a spark job is executing so infer schema is a costly operation and it is not recommended in a production scenarios because as you can see when you do an infer schema spark will literally go to the data right read all the data at least uh, it, it passes through the data and then it decides uh, which uh, attribute is of which data type so that's the uh, that is where uh, you see this right and if you're just executing without this right let us see there is a sp still a job is executing right basically what we are trying to uh, say here is uh, so if you don't specify the schema like uh, there is two things right you don't you are not specifying a schema here whether you infer a schema so here i'm not informing inferring a schema but now i infer a schema so when i'm not inf inferring a schema also there is a spark job executing but I, when i infer a schema also a spark job is executing that means uh, uh, what actually is happening in the background is it is actually going through the data and it is parsing the data and then actually deciding which data type to use so and however on the other way around right if you actually explicitly specify the schema whether using the two option one option is uh, as we define uh, like uh, just define a schema in a variable and execute this or the struct type uh, way that we have discussed uh, in either of the way when you kind of uh, uh, spark dot read dot json and you actually specify the schema as you can see here uh, the spark job is not executing so that is where you are saving your cost you are saying your time and memory so basically uh, by specifying the data type explicitly otherwise uh, it would be a costly operation uh, both in terms of performance and time so it is always recommended either you, you define the data type uh, like this uh, where you define all the uh, all the data types in a variable and then use a schema or you define a struct type uh, way of doing it like how we did here right so hope uh, this was useful and uh, 